Hi, Buddies class. I am working on building a new course, or new for me, that I'm teaching online for the first time right now, Art 100, Art Appreciation. And so I thought I would give you a quick example of how I'm doing so-called backwards course design. I don't really think it's backwards. It actually seems like the right way to me, like the, the way that I would think of doing it first, but that's what it's called. Here are some backwards puppers and kitties. By the way, hi, I'm Kara. I probably know you, um, Kara Smulovitz. If I don't, I am not feeling camera ready today, so I'm just gonna talk, but here is my photo. So the way that I go about this idea of backwards course design is I start with an objective from my syllabus. So here's an objective from my syllabus. I want students to practice analyzing artworks by considering the formal elements of artwork examples, their subject matter, and their social and historical contexts. So that's one of the like three or four big objectives for the whole class that I have on my syllabus. I decide when I'm planning a lesson what I want to focus on. So the lesson that I'm planning right now, I know that I want to focus specifically on having them practice connecting up artworks to their context. So looking at an artwork and making connections to what was happening at the time, what was going on politically, what was going on geographically, who was purchasing the artwork and why. So those kinds of context connections. So here's just me paring down that big objective. So I had my big objective for my syllabus. Now I've decided I wanna focus on this part, make connections between artwork and its historical context. So once I know what my focus is for the lesson, I figure out how I'm going to assess it. So I know I want them to learn this. So how am I gonna find out that they learned it? So for this particular one, I decided I wanna give them two options for how they can show me that they learned this. One is an essay where they'll choose one of the artworks we studied during this week and they'll research the historical context and then they'll show that they can connect the artwork to the context in an essay. I'm also going to give them the option to do a video presentation where they make a video that shows the artwork and then shows slides that relate to the context and they do a voiceover that connects them up. So they've got two options. So now I know what my objective is and then I know how I will assess it. So how I'm gonna tell if they can meet that objective. So to recap, I have my objective, making connections between artwork and a historical context, and I decided I'm going to assess it using um, two options. They can either choose to do a video or they can choose an essay. So now I know what I'm trying to teach them. I know how they're gonna show me that they learned it, but it's the middle part that I have to figure out. How do I actually get them to develop that skill? That is the hard part. This cat is me thinking about it. That's what I spent all day today doing, figuring out how can I, you know, ultimately make sure I've taught them this skill so that when I assess them for it using the essay or the video, they'll be able to do it successfully. So that means I need to create content and activities that will help them be successful. What I decided to do is first I made a video explaining the terms. So I explained to them what context was, I showed them examples, I talked through it. Then I found a number of different essays about the artworks we were talking about. This, this week we're gonna be talking about landscape. So I found lots of different information about different landscape painters. I gave them the articles and the videos to read. And then I wrote little kind of transition sections that pointed out where the context elements were. So they're learning about landscape, but I'm making sure they're paying attention to where the elements that have to do with context are. So I need this little chart to kind of explain my thinking here. So this is my cat thinking moment. And then here is what the cat came up with. So the objective is make connections to context. Follow the blue arrow. I figured out my assessment. So that's the essay or the video. So follow the blue arrow again. I now need to create the content. So I make a video explaining the terms. Students read some outside articles. I make sure that I'm pointing them to parts of the articles or the outside videos that I'm using that make clear where the authors are using elements of context. Then I have to have them practice this. So I've given them the content, but I can't just expect them to right away prove that they can do this, that they can meet this objective. So I have a practice activity. 
and it is graded, but it's low stakes, where they annotate an image in groups. So I'm going to use um, a tool called Perusal for this, but there's all different kinds of ways that you can create a practice activity. For me, I'm going to have them all look at an image together, and then in groups, they will write down things that they see in the image that they can connect to context. They'll basically make lists and point you know, with arrows to the elements of the artwork that they can connect up to context. And then they'll see each other's annotations and they can comment back and forth. So they'll be interacting here, practicing making those connections and then seeing what other students do, which I think will help them figure out if they're doing it right. Then I'll go in there and give feedback. So, you know, if they're totally missing the mark, I'm going to tell them at that point. Once they've done the practice, then they'll do that assessment that I already decided on. So follow the orange arrow. Now that they've practiced, they will do their essay or their video presentation and show that they can connect up elements of an artwork to elements of historical context. Follow the orange arrow from that, that points right back to my original objective. So that's the backwards element of it. You start with the objective and then that's also kind of where the students end, right? Like I start with the objective in my design, but ultimately they're working their way through the class and then at the end, they're realizing they can meet that objective. Hopefully that made sense. That's that, let me go back to my first slide. That's that backwards course, I, course design idea. Okay, that was very quick and scattered, but hopefully you get the feeling of it. I find that it's much more intuitive for me because I'm not just, throwing a big mass of content at them and then trying to figure out what I should assess about it. Instead, I figure out first what I want them to learn and then I can put in any content I want. So this lesson, which I've just been building, it's got a lot of cool other stuff besides things that relate to context specifically. You know, we're talking about American landscape painting, we're learning about the way that land that was taken from Native Americans is then depicted by European settlers. We're learning all these different interesting things, also about color theory and brush strokes and lots of different other elements. But ultimately, all that content will also help them develop that skill about making connections to context. And that was that objective that I had. Okay, that's it. Thanks.